This video will talk about diagnostics of residuals. We'll talk especially about how we can use diagnostic plots to check the assumptions of regression. The first way to do that is to look at a residual plot. What you're seeing here is the chicken and lysine data with 12 observations. The fitted values are along the x-axis and the residual values are along the y-axis. The ideal plot that we're seeing here would be one with no obvious trends. That is, the residuals appear evenly dispersed around zero at every region along the x-axis. This would indicate that assumption of constant variance is held. What we can see here with the chicken data is that we have one data point that's kind of up here with a pretty high positive residual, but for the most part the values are centered around zero. Remember, we can use the formula. We represent the residual by E sub i. That equals our observed value, y sub i, minus y i hat, our estimated value. And so that equals the observed value, y sub i, minus the prediction or the estimate we get from our regression equation. And so ideally, we would see no estimated residual standing out from the rest of the data points. If it did, it could indicate a heavy-tailed or a non-normal distribution. Ideally, this blue line, this trend line that we drew, would be all around zero. Another way to look at residuals is to standardize them. All that we do here is we take the residual value and we correct it for the differences in the standard deviation of the residuals. So residuals for large values tend to have a lower standard deviation. What we're really looking for here are all the values to be within plus or minus 2 around 0. So you can think back to the normal distribution when we think to standard deviations. All of the values should be fairly close to the mean within plus or minus 2 standard deviations. Again, you can see our data point here uh, that, st that stands out from the rest of the data in the chicken data set. Another way to look at the residuals is to take the square root of those standardized residuals. When, we're, when we take the square root, we're taking the absolute value of the residuals in that square root. The residuals then are rescaled with a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. All of the values have to be positive. Now what we're looking for here is a trend line that should be relatively flat. And so you can see here with our blue line, Again, our pesky data point here with a large residual kind of doesn't make this blue line smooth out or evenly flat. And so this would be another way that we could check the assumption of uh, the residuals. Another useful way to look for data points and assess the assumptions is to calculate the Cook's distance. This measure allows us to examine specific observations and how they influence the regression. And so let's take a look at the data from the chicken and lysine data set. What we can see here is if we ranked and we looked at the rows for the 12 data points, the first observation and the fifth observation are observations worth checking. This is because they are influential data points. So it could also be used, this statistic, to test and to find out if more samples are needed. Now the next series of graphs are going to show you some trends. Generally we have again imagine the fitted values along the y-axis or sorry along the x-axis and the residual values along the y-axis. 